Hello, Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada. And what we have here is a 1960s Series 2 Land Rover, 88-inch uh, short wheelbase deluxe version. This isn't a 2A, it's a 2, and there are, there are some important differences between them. And so uh, I'll do a video on this, on this vehicle here. Uh, we'll go through uh, some of the lineage of the Rovers from the Series 1 to the 2 to the 2A to the 3. Uh, we'll go through this vehicle in particular. And then we'll describe what I think the Land Rover aficionados look for in a Rover, which is, um, it might be a little bit more tolerant of patina <laughs> on a regular uh, vehicle. But this is, a, this is a really neat old truck and uh, I'll uh, look forward to showing, showing it to you. I'll turn this camera around and uh, let's begin. Okay, so we know the brief history of the Land Rover. The, the first ones came out in 1948 and they were based on the wartime Jeep. Um, so there were no Land Rovers during World War II, but, uh, but the Wilkes brothers uh, had a, uh, a surplus Jeep and they were looking for a way to get the Rover car company back in production after the war. It was an interim vehicle and really meant as like a mobile power source for farmers. Okay, so that's the series one. We went through, it went through 80, 80 inch, 80, 86 inch and 88 inch. That takes you from 1948 to 1958. And then they get the idea that, well, it's a lot, it's a lot more popular than they ever thought. And the, and the, and the, the series ones use some relatively expensive Rover car componentry. So they're interested in kind of bringing their costs down. Uh, they were also, the, the Series 1, you, you could never accuse it of being styled. It was just sort of bent into shape with um, with tools and dies that were easy with raw materials that were plentiful and the aluminum was plentiful. Steel was not and uh, and had to be rationed. So, um, you know, this, 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 like I said, the story is well known. But uh, anyway, for the Series 2, um, they actually wanted, they actually put some effort into styling the vehicle and that's how you get this, uh, you know, you get these curves on the side of it. The Series 1s were just slab side of it. Okay, so they make a Series 2 and there's the 88 inch and the 109 inch. The 109s are the, the, the pickup trucks in the station wagon and they introduce a new engine. It's a two and a quarter liter um, Rover engine. It's different from the 1600 and two liter uh, IOE engines that were taken right from the uh, Rover passenger. Okay, so this is a Land Rover engine. Um, two and a quarter liter, four speed, about, about 80 horsepower, about 120 pound feet of torque. Uh, okay, and then for 61, they wanted a diesel variant, uh, a two and a quarter liter diesel variant, and that Unusually, what they did is they is they made the the petrol and the diesel version share the same block uh, and many of the components, and so it was necessary to change the two and a quarter liter petrol engine so that they could make it in conjunction with the diesel and share a bunch of components, and that's why an early series two two and a quarter liter engine looks virtually identical to the later one but many of the components are changed. The crank's different, like many of the parts are, are different. So it's actually quite unusual to find a Rover with its two and a quarter, series two with its two and a quarter liter engine, because most of them have been replaced because the spares for the two and a quarter are a lot easier to find. And the, the, the parts industry that's been built up around the Rovers is really built up around the later two and a quarter engines and 90 engines and so on and not the early two and a quarter so it's actually pretty rare and it would have only been the first 88 inch series 2 actually used the old two liter engine and they and they and they used the more powerful two and a quarter just for the station wagons then at around 1960 and this is a 1960 all the rovers got the new two and a quarter liter engine but in like 61 um, they changed to a 2a so 88 inch Land Rovers would have only had this engine for less than two years, okay? So it's, it's actually pretty rare, uh, a rare car. 
The, the easiest way to tell is the exhaust manifold. And we can see this, uh, I think they call it a swan neck. And so you can see it exiting up and out, whereas the two A um, the two A exhaust manifolds go kind of down and back, okay? Um, and the two A's, or the twos, this is a two. I mean, if, if we look at it, you know, we can see it, it's got some series ones part, like that little round Lucas fuse box. That didn't that didn't happen in the series twos, or the two A's, that, that's from the series one. And it is a different arrangement for the um, fuse boxes and voltage regulators. Um, up to about 67, I think they're all positive earth. So you can see that's a positive, and you can see then it just, it, uh, you can see the grounding strap. So they're positive earth uh, uh, vehicles, okay? And it's got all the original wiring, and it really hasn't been mucked around with, which makes it, uh, which makes it again, like quite unusual. So it's the original radiator, and these will have these will have a stamp on them, which uh, so that should tell you. Um, oh, what am I looking at? That should tell you, and that's a sixty. So so they date stamp the last the last uh, uh, two digits for the year. So the car is a sixty, and the radiator is a sixty original. Uh, obviously, the carb is an original. That's a new Weber carb that we put in the car. Okay. Um, most of the things on the Rovers are stamped uh, as well. You can see it's got stamping on the wheels as well. All right. So what do, uh, what do you do when you look at an old Rover and try to assess it? Well, I guess the first thing you do is you'd think about, okay, well, what's this vehicle, like what's been done to it? How has it been modified? Who's been in there? What's been changed? What what parts are original? What what parts are later modifications? Who did what to it? How did it start life and what's it like now? Because you know the the, the sort of the Meccano sort of nature of these rovers lends itself to you know people taking them apart and then they're they're always working vehicles. So, you know, if they stopped working for something, they were they were modified usually horribly and usually with parts that just happen to be around you know you don't find rovers with nice service files where they went to you know the local specialist their whole life and are in their original condition usually these vehicles you know, you know they're most of them are, are dragged out of the bush um at least in at least in alberta and bc and 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 they were repaired you know in the field um, and they're were, they were bought by guys with little farms and acreages or they were sold to utility companies and they had their own in-house maintenance. So you virtually never get any records with an old Rover. You really have to go through it. Uh, but if you've seen enough of them, you get an idea of what's original and what isn't. Um, uh, so... Uh, this one, obviously, the fenders have been replaced, and uh, and I did that. Uh, this was they were they were beyond uh, beyond repair. They were bashed, completely bashed up, and so um, we found some. Actually, the outer fenders and the inners are from a 1969, which was which is a bug eye, which had a different um, front panel arrangement, and so these were NOS that I got from. Uh, pangolin and uh, so we then took these apart and replaced the um, uh, the front of the fenders um, the grill panel is original the bumpers are original the capstan winch is original and you can see it has the original maroon uh, marine blue paint it had looks like it's had two coats of marine blue paint um, you can see which is great because you see the original color and this the 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 top layer is uh is faded um in the back these rear panels were damaged and uh these were new production aluminum panels that i got out of england and then we um and then we uh drilled out all the rivets and uh and uh and uh, replaced those i ran I, I for whatever reason i just couldn't find the 
silver rivets. The only ones I could find were the black ones. Um, you could, you could uh, take a, a copper wheel to them and make them silver if you want, or just drill them out and replace them. Um, but, uh, and then this piece was new too, uh, along the bottom. And that, this piece here, you can see that, um, it spans the whole width of the car and then supports this panel as well. Okay, so uh, it got some body work and then, you know, there'd be no way you could match the paint. Um, and the best way to match it was just to match it to the places on the rover where the paint had wore off, which was the aluminum, which is why we left them in just aluminum. Okay, so the uh, that was done to the bodywork. Everything else, you know, weather stripping and all that, all that looks original to me. Um, somebody's been in the, the bulkhead and we can see we have new screws there some new rivets and we've got a bunch of these uh these robertson screws and of course no car i don't think ever came with square robertson screws those are like from home depot for you know like for woodworking so we know that uh, some work's been done on the bulkhead the instrument panel's been um been taken up so i'm not sure what happened here all this has been taken apart at one point and it's all been painted black it would have been it would have been you can see that the body color under there and the doors and so somebody would have taken the bulkhead down painted the bulkhead and then changed all the fasteners we have our original uh individual wiper motors uh with the uh ventilation um we've got the series two um signal light indicator there and we've got the heater controls over there, the sprung banjo wheel. We can see that we've got the horn button as well. So that is all original series two. And we have, you know, all the original, um, you know, it's kind of tacked in there a little bit. It's not that secure, but we've got all the original elephant hide um, trim pieces, which is also quite unusual. The original, um, jump seats in the back and elephant hide. These ones have been recovered. Well, the two outside ones have been recovered. That's the original elephant hide. And these two, uh, uh, the, the, the two outboard seats have been recovered. Um, all the galvanizing is, uh, is original and shows kind of a wonderful patina. Uh, and that's pretty, I mean, the, the only thing we don't really have is the original screws. But all the components in this car are uh, are original, original side screens and doors. You can get a lot of these parts new, and um, I mean these things take quite a beating. And so, um, you know, oftentimes the the side screens are replacement and the, the doors are replacement. It, it's really quite unusual to find a, one that's that's so original. Um, we're showing. Uh, 62,000 miles, which I'm sure sounds right to me. And I can just show you the serial number there, the 1440. So the, the fourth digit indicates that it's a um, 1960, okay? Looks like we wired in a new brake, uh, brake light switch, uh, which is there, okay. So for the Land Rover collector, this is kind of what you're looking for. You know, you're looking for, uh, you know, uh, an untouched car with all of the, you know, the, the patina that shows a life of, you know, of, of hard work. Um, you know, you want to see these original rivets. You want to see the spot welds. You know, that's how the box is put together. I mean, if it gets a lot of body work, that, that just gets covered in filler and it's gone. Um, it's unusual to find one without the rear end crunch, usually on the passenger side. Uh, this is always crunched in. So to get one with a straight box, the original rivets, and all the original details for the spot wire uh, is, really uh, is really quite exciting and, and quite rare. Um, and uh, you know, it's just never been touched. These, these seals are really dry. And I think one of these has a crack in it. Uh, we've got all the original hardware and 
all the original details. Uh, we can see it kind of got rubbed hard against something here. And uh, you know, we can see that's a little bit damaged. Those are rivets that have popped out. Again, these things didn't have an easy life. So I'm sure it probably, you know, just got crunched on some rocks or something like that. Um, the mirror is a later addition. That's a Defender mirror and this hinge is incorrect. It should be like that. So somebody put uh, a later hinge in and, uh, you know, uh, an aerial. Uh, we have Emergency Medical Services Calgary. I wonder what that is. Um, and we have the early type of vent screen. And then again, we see these square fasteners. So somebody's been in there to, uh, to take those off. All of these pads for the spare tire and so on are all original. This is a deluxe and a deluxe wagon. You got this sort of curved hood instead of the knife edged hood. You got the safari roof um, and then you got the gray elephant hide upholstery. If it was a utility, you'd have a different bonnet you wouldn't have this alpine roof, you wouldn't have these skylights, and you'd have a much simpler um, black, uh, uh, black vinyl interior instead. This vehicle would have also come with elephant hide door coverings. So those have been lost to time. They don't, they don't last too long, but you can buy excellent, an excellent uh, reproductions for next more trim, okay? So uh, anyway, uh, now, so that's in terms of originality, I mean, that's what you look for. Um, and you, you look, generally speaking, you, you know, how beat up, how beat up the car is. Um, you need to look at, at it carefully for rust. And where you find that is in the rear cross member first. So most of these will have had serious chassis repair. Um, and you'll see it in the rear cross member. Now, also, this corner is usually always crunched. And then we can see that, uh, we can see there that it has been bent in a little bit. And that just seems to happen to all of them. Um, to look for the rust, where you go is you go back in here and it gets kicked up from the wheel, fills up that rear cross member and then, and then it starts to go. So this one's actually not rusty. I mean, it's, you can see that it's got some surface rust on it, but it's, but it's solid metal. And most of them, you know, you need to cut all that out and replace it. And we even see, you know, evidence of the original black paint on the car. Um, so, I mean, it looks, it looks awful, but for a Land Rover, actually, it's pretty good. You see the fuel tank that lives there. Um, the, let's go to the other side. Um, and we'll see what's on there. Like this, where the driver can see where he's going, this corner always seems to be okay. It's that corner that gets bad. All right, so let's go back here. And uh, that's where the exhaust would have exited originally. That's the exhaust hanger. And it just got kind of cut off and modified down there. Um, but actually, it is not bad in there. Uh, it really isn't. Again, for a rover. Um, uh, and then the other place that it's that it, they rust is in the bulkhead. And uh, in these areas here, and in this side of the bulkhead, the lower parts of the bulkhead and so on. So it's actually really good. Um, normally all this stuff needs to be replaced. And in fact, you know, maybe that is what happened with this is, you know, the, the new floors were put in and it was painted. Probably, because that, that would just make sense. Uh, most of them have had that work done. Um, but overall, the chassis is in like completely reasonable shape. Um, and it doesn't, there's no crash damage other than that corner than, uh, that I can see. So uh, a really good solid original uh, vehicle that's actually pretty rare. Series 2 with its original engine in it, original uh, positive earth um, electrics. And uh, and this one drives, you know, I did a driving one. Um, it drives really nice. Like it's, it's really surprising. There we go. And just with an original truck, you know, you find that the 
that the weights on the accelerator and the way the hood releases and the door gaps and you know it just all fits together when you take a car apart and you put it back together it's actually really tough to get it to operate as smoothly as when it was original just because of all the all the adjustments that uh, all the small adjustments that the guys on the line you know made um, you know doing it doing a hundred of them every day for most of their lives versus you doing it you know once um, so you know this vehicle the clutch the accelerator the shifting the gearbox I mean it all just feels really well it, original um, you know when you when you restore the cars often they're they're uh, and maybe they just take a little bit of time to settle in uh, to break in um, but it's a little bit notchier Okay, so um, this Land Rover has been parked for about three or four days. I haven't started it. It's around um, five or six degrees Celsius, so it's a little bit crisp. It's early in the evening, and um, I'll uh, turn the ignition on in the Rover. I will pull the choke out, push in the clutch, and start the, the starter button is down there. All right. And the uh, car starts on the button. I'll close these windows. Let it warm up for a second. Choke light works. That's the ignition light. Uh, we have um, the light for the interior. You see that come on there. Uh, we have our water temperature. The vehicle's warm now, it's at 80. Oil pressure is at just over 50. We have our signal lights that work. Uh, we have our blower motor, does a pretty good job. And our temperature control, so that works. All right, we've got these. Um, these are pretty feeble at the best of times, but uh, if you give this one a second, it comes to life. <laughs> I, I don't know how, how effective it's going to be, but <laughs> it does work. And this guy here, let's see. Yeah, it's trying. Uh, what happens is that they get uh, the, the grease after they don't get used for like 30 years solidifies. And then um, the operation is really slow. Okay. So that's what happens there. Um, but they do work. Okay, so we have the vent screens, and they are both free. Um, we have the hand throttle, which works for fast idle and a slow idle. And we've got the heaters, which work. Interior lights work. Lights <laughs> horn does work. Anyway, uh, that's it for the interior switches, gauges, speedometer works, fuel gauge works, the amps work. Uh, there'll be a light in there for the main beam. There's a switch on the bulkhead for the main beam, but again, I can't get the lights to work. That's heater. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Forty psi of oil pressure. Water temperature is cold, and the yeah, idle settle down. Non-synchro in the um, in uh, first and second gears, uh, and so we usually hit third just to stop the transmission from um, from spinning. Um, and this gear shift is nicely weighted. And it's got a nice spring on it, so it's easy to find the gears. So reverse, it's there, and handbrake is already off, and it is down there. Alright, first gear. Let's just back it out here. And back into reverse, I'll hit third gear. The gates. And here we go. So there's no judder in the clutch. 
Uh, the take up is pretty smooth. And uh, I'm used to driving rovers with the uh, canvas top, so it's nice to have these Alpine lights uh, for the uh, for the deluxe version. A lot of light in the cabin, a lot of visibility. Okay, third gear, and we'll get first, and off we go.
this is uh, I don't know. It's a really great. It's a it's a really great truck. I'm very pleased to have it and have it as a reference as well to the other trucks that uh, that I've restored. And uh, you know, I continue to go back to this car to look for you know the way <clears throat> the way they did stuff and the where you know the where the springs attached and the throttle linkage and all those little details. So it's a it's a it's a a, a very a, a very original solid truck that drives nice okay so with that lawrence romanowski from calgary canada with a great old land rover